Who were the non-German fighters in Hitler's SS and why did they join? We're looking into foreign volunteers in the SS during World War II. These fighters, not from Germany, joined for different reasons. Some hated communism, some wanted their countries to be free, and others had their reasons that didn't fully match Nazi beliefs. Their story is still a hot topic. They were pulled in by strong messages that made the Nazi fight look like a fight for all of Europe against communism. A key example is the Finnish fighters in the Waffen-SS, the SS's armed part. We will uncover the real reasons behind their choice to fight and what happened because of it. Stay with us to learn about these foreign fighters in Hitler's SS. The SS, Hitler's elite force, wasn't just a German story, it had global reach. This group, known for its brutality and strict loyalty to Nazi ideology, stretched its influence far beyond Germany's borders. How did this happen, and why did people from different countries join their ranks? During the 1930s and 1940s, the SS sought alliances and sympathies from various nations. They did this by tapping into anti-communist sentiments, offering support for nationalistic movements, and exploiting European political unrest and beyond. The SS cleverly used propaganda to position themselves as defenders against communism, appealing to countries fearful of Soviet influence. One significant example was the Waffen-SS, the SS's armed wing. It included volunteers from across Europe. Norwegians, Danes, French, Dutch, and even some from the Balkans and Baltic states. By 1944, these foreign volunteers formed about half of the Waffen-SS. Their reasons for joining varied. Some were attracted by Nazi propaganda, others sought to fight against the Soviet Union, and some saw it as a way to gain power or independence for their nations. The Charlemagne Division, comprising French volunteers in the SS, represents a complex chapter of World War II, represented by figures like Henri Joseph Finet. Leading the 1st Battalion of the 33rd Waffen Grenadiers, Finet and his unit were part of the all-French SS Charlemagne Division, a symbol of France's collaboration with Nazi Germany. The Charlemagne Division's most notable moment came in the final days of the war. As Berlin was encircled and the Third Reich crumbled, these French SS fighters displayed fierce resistance. Finet was recognized for his bravery in battle, even receiving the Iron Cross for his actions during the bloody Battle of Berlin. However, the war's end marked a drastic turn for these soldiers. With the fall of Nazi Germany, members of the Charlemagne Division, including Finet, faced dire consequences. Many were captured and repatriated to France, where they were often met with hostility and viewed as traitors. Finet's post-war life was marked by controversy and hardship. He was put on trial for his collaboration with the Nazis. Despite his wartime bravery, Finet's association with the SS overshadowed his military accomplishments. He was initially sentenced to death, a fate common for many in the Charlemagne Division, but this was later commuted to a prison sentence. After serving his time, Finet lived a relatively obscure life, struggling with the stigma of his past until he died in 2002. Moving from the French Charlemagne Division, we delve into other notable SS units, each with its unique role and impact during World War II. The 5th Panzer Division YK, comprising volunteers from Germany, Nordic countries, and other European nations, was heavily involved on the Eastern Front, participating in major battles like the invasion of the Soviet Union and the Battle of Kursk. However, their involvement wasn't without controversy, as they were implicated in war crimes, including civilian massacres and prisoner mistreatment. Similarly, the 28th SS Volunteer Grenadier Division Wallenine, primarily made up of Belgian volunteers from the Walloon region, was active on the Eastern Front and played a significant role in the defense of Berlin. Their participation in the war culminated in fierce combat as the conflict reached its peak. Post-war, members of this division faced legal repercussions for their collaboration with the SS, a common fate for many foreign volunteers in the SS. The 13th Waffen SS Mountain Division, known as the Hanchar Division and primarily composed of Bosnian Muslims, presents a particularly complex case. Deployed in the Balkans, the division was involved in anti-partisan operations amidst the region's ethnic and religious tensions. They have been associated with ethnic cleansing and war crimes, though these allegations remain a subject of historical debate. These divisions underscore the SS's strategy of leveraging foreign volunteers and exploiting nationalist and anti-communist sentiments. Their actions in key battles and the atrocities they were involved in reflect not just the military dimension of their participation, but also the ideological and political intricacies of their alignment with the SS during World War II. The Spanish Blue Division, known for its tenacious and, at times, ruthless fighters, holds a unique place in the history of World War II. Sent by Spanish dictator Francisco Franco to aid Nazi Germany on the Eastern Front, these volunteers embodied a fierce combat spirit that was both admired and feared. 
Under Franco's rule, Spain, while officially neutral, saw the Blue Division as a means to align with Hitler's Germany and oppose Soviet communism, an essential aspect of Franco's ideology. The division was composed largely of Spanish soldiers, many of whom were fervent nationalists and anti-communists, driven by patriotic fervor and ideological conviction. On the Eastern Front, particularly during the Siege of Leningrad, the Blue Division earned a reputation for its doggedness in battle. Their tenacity was notable, often engaging in intense and bloody combat. This relentless approach, while contributing to their military effectiveness, also led to accusations of war crimes, reflecting the brutal nature of warfare on the Eastern Front. An often overlooked fact about the Blue Division is the diverse composition of its ranks. While primarily made up of Spanish volunteers, the division also included volunteers from other countries, including some Germans and Portuguese, making it a somewhat international unit within the German military structure. The division story did not end with its official disbandment in 1943. Despite Franco's recall, many of these soldiers chose to remain on the Eastern Front, with some even joining other German units to continue fighting against the Soviets. This decision underscored their strong anti-communist sentiments and commitment to the fight, even in the face of Spain's changing diplomatic stance. Transitioning from the Spanish Blue Division, we now turn our attention to another unique faction within the ranks of World War II forces, the Russian Liberation Army, led by Andrei Vlasov. This group, along with other distinctive units like the Free Arabian Legion and the Indian Tiger Legion, represents the diverse and complex nature of volunteer forces during the war. The Russian Liberation Army, which was under the direction of Andrei Vlasov, a former Soviet general who defected to the Nazis, stands out for its intriguing background. Disillusioned with Stalin's regime, Vlasov saw an opportunity to oppose Soviet rule by aligning with Germany. The army consisted primarily of Soviet prisoners of war and defectors who shared a common goal of liberating Russia from Stalin's grip. However, their collaboration with the Nazis was fraught with challenges, including skepticism from both the German military leadership and other anti-Soviet factions. The Russian Liberation Army's impact was limited, and their fate after the war was grim, with many members, including Vlasov, captured and executed by the Soviet authorities. Similarly, the Free Arabian Legion and the Indian Tiger Legion were other unique units formed by the Nazis to harness anti-British sentiments during the war. The Free Arabian Legion was composed mainly of Arab volunteers, driven by the promise of liberation from British and French colonial rule. Their role was primarily in propaganda efforts, though they also participated in some military operations in North Africa and the Balkans. The Indian Tiger Legion, led by Subhash Chandra Bose, was formed with Indian prisoners of war and expatriates. Their objective was to fight against British colonial rule in India, aligning with Germany as a means to this end. While they saw limited combat, their existence was a significant symbol of the global reach of the war and the varied motivations of those involved. These units, each with its unique composition and objectives, underscore the global dimensions of World War II. They reveal how the conflict was not only a battle between major powers, but also a platform for various groups and leaders to pursue their own political and ideological goals. In our journey through World War II, we find fascinating stories of foreign groups like the Spanish Blue Division, the Russian Liberation Army, the Arabian Legion, and the Indian Tiger Legion who joined the SS. Their reasons were different. Some were against communism, others wanted their countries to be free, and many were caught in the politics of the time. They fought in big battles, showing how the war reached far and wide and brought together people from all over the world. After the war, life was tough for these fighters. Some were put on trial, others tried to blend back into everyday life, but all carried the weight of their past. Their stories show us how complicated war can be, with people making hard choices for many reasons. Looking at these groups gives us a new angle on World War II. It's not just about countries fighting each other, but also about the people in those wars, their hopes, and their struggles. These stories make us think deeper about the war, seeing it not just as a significant event in history, but as a time that changed many people's lives in many ways.